The Flat Earth Fail compilations has been a staple on this channel, so much so that we are now on the 43rd episode. So when I saw a Flat Earther come up with Flat Earth Wins compilation number one, I literally dropped everything I was doing and watched it. Cannot wait for this one. Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today, a huge thank you to the sponsors of today's video, Star Trek Fleet Command. Star Trek Fleet Command is a free-to-play open-world MMO game in which you command a starbase on the front lines of the Star Trek universe. You can construct fleets of your favourite ships, recruit legendary officers to crew them, and pursue your goals of expanding territories, exterminating your rivals, exploiting resources, and exploring strange new worlds. This month, the Borg are back with new missions inspired by their iconic appearances in Star Trek The Next Generation. The Borg are one of my favourite bad guys in all of science fiction. You can join fan favourite Hugh the Borg and help him stop a scientist's quest for revenge against the Collective. Save an eager pack led from himself as he tries to get assimilated by the Borg on purpose and prevent the Borg from assimilating your technology behind your AI assistant Maya. And now introducing Fleet Commanders, a new feature to Star Trek Fleet Command allowing players to assign well-known Star Trek heroes and villains to oversee strategy from their star bases for increased power and effectiveness in the game. Fleet Commanders launches with three choices, Admiral James T. Kirk, Captain Spock and Locutus of Borg, and build the command center, a new starbase location in which you can manage your fleet commanders. The Borg are back in Star Trek Fleet Command. Star Trek Fleet Command is available for free on iOS, Android, and Windows. Download now by using my link below in the description or use my QR code to join the fight now. Right, back to today's video, which as I said earlier, is a new series from Flat Earther The Queens. Now, she's appeared on the Flat Earth Fail compilation before, which I guess is where she's got her idea from. I'm a little flattered. Here we go. But basically, there was a video made by Planner Walk, and it was called Nathan Oakley Has the Saddest Flat Earth Channel on YouTube. <laughs> Good one, Planner Walk, and very true. Featuring at FTFE Official, another globe tart. And basically, you know, they just shun flat earth believers just like Simon Dan uh, basically like you can't really find too much from Simon Dan about the globe earth his videos are basically contributed to shaming flat earthers instead of trying to prove a point in which I will do today shaming flat earthers I don't do that do I now I took it upon myself to comment down in the comment section of this video and I pretty much told them, you know, you guys can't try to debunk and talk about people when you can't even prove things yourself, such as if you all can't explain how the sun can reflect light on the side of the moon that faces away from it at all times, sit this one out. Or did you all forget that the moon revolves around the earth and not the sun? You guys are the jokes. Whoa, 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 whoa. What did she say there? Such as if you all can't explain how the sun can reflect light on the side of the moon that faces away from it at all times. Um, I don't really know how to tell you this. It doesn't. And so someone replied by the name of John Q. Public, and he says how the sun can reflect light on the side of the moon that faces away from it. It doesn't. Your ignorance is not an argument. Well, I wouldn't have put it like that, but yes. Make sure you guys keep that in mind. Now, we also had... TG Studio 85 at the Queens is an easy explanation. Even my seven year old understood it. That side is lit by light reflected off Earth. That phenomenon is called Earth shine. OK, so a possible explanation as to how the moon could be slightly illuminated. Yes. So if that phenomenon is called earth shine, that means that when you go outside at nighttime and you look in the sky, you're looking at earth shine because that side of the moon that faces away from the earth at all times is the side of the moon that we're seeing. The side that faces earth is that side that the side that we see at night cannot face the earth and the sun at the same time. So you have to pick a side. Well, actually, it can when it is here in its orbit. It's called a full moon facing us and the sun at the same time. Therefore, what you are saying is that the side that we see in our nighttime skies 
is a phenomenon called Earthshine. So why have all of you globe tards and uh, professors and all of the rest of you guys that believe in the globe Earth have been saying this whole time that the moonlight is the sunlight reflecting off of it. Now all of a sudden it's Earthshine. Fail. Well, it's pretty easy to see the difference between the sunlight reflecting off the moon and Earthshine. Take a look at this picture. The bright part is where the sun is reflecting off it. The rest of the moon is illuminated very slightly by Earthshine. It's so dim because the sun's light is being reflected off Earth and then onto the moon. But I'm not sure that the Earthshine explanation was correct anyway. Now I think this is more of a misunderstanding of the Earth-Moon-Sun relationship by the Queens. Let's move on to the point where she gets a diagram out to try and explain her issue. But I have personally seen only the bottom half of the moon lit at a point of time and that it's impossible based on the globe earth model if the light is only supposed to come in horizontally. Ah yes, well that will all be down to your location on the globe. Here on the south coast of the UK, the first quarter moon looks like this, illuminated from the bottom right from our perspective. In Australia it will look like this, illuminated from the bottom left. This is because of our perspective as I just said. And it's not impossible at all. When the moon is in a position in its orbit that is its right angles to the sun, like the first quarter, then you will see that whilst it has a whole face illuminated, we can only see half of that face. As you can see, it's entirely possible. Just the bottom portion of the moon should not be lit. But if you watch the sky enough, you will see that happens. So here in this diagram, we have the phases of the moon. Of course, we have the third quarter, the waning gibbous, full moon, waxing gibbous, first quarter, waxing crescent, new moon, and waning crescent. But the phase I want to focus on is the full moon. Now, Yoon Deloy stated at the Queens, I just explained to you that the side we can't see will point away from the sun during a full moon. Bang on, the side facing away from us during a full moon is in complete darkness. But Pilo 1408 stated, that's a lie. The side we see does face the sun during the full moon. <laughs> so you see how they can't even come to a common agreement? These globe tarts fail. Um, the side that we can't see that's facing away from the sun is exactly the same as the side that we can see that is facing the sun. Both comments mean the same thing. How can you not see that? Dear oh dear. Now Kevin Smith state at the Queens, the phases of the moon change based on what part of the moon is facing the sun. The sun is not inside the moon's orbit. In about 28 days, the sun will have shown a complete 360 degrees of the moon, just as it does on Earth in 24 hours. We call that night and day. So if you call that night and day, shouldn't there be a nighttime side of the moon and a daytime side? Yes, there is, but the moon takes 28 days to rotate once on its axis. So if you lived on the moon, each day would roughly be about 14 days long as well, or should I say a light side and a dark side, fail. What? There is a light side and a dark side. It's the moon's day and night. I think I know the Queen's issue, and it's very common amongst flat earthers. They cannot think in 3D. Look at this video clip here, the Queen's. It shows you very nicely, I think, how the moon and earth are illuminated by the sun, and crucially, how we view the moon here on earth during its orbit. If you watch that, then you should be convinced, although I doubt that she will be. So now we move over to space.com and of course they're just having on here when the next full moon will be. And the next full moon will be on Friday, January 6th at 6.08 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, Space.com says most of the time, the full moon isn't perfectly full. We always see the same side of the moon, but part of it is in shadow due to the moon's rotation. Only when the moon, earth, and the sun are perfectly aligned is the moon 100% full, and that alignment produces a lunar eclipse. And sometimes, once in a blue moon, the moon is full twice in a month or four times in a season, depending on which definition you prefer. Well, to clarify here, the moon's orbit is at a five degree inclination to our own, which means usually during a full moon, it isn't 100% illuminated, it's over 99%, but 
we can still call it a full moon, can't we? And yes, it is only truly 100% fully illuminated at a time when the moon, earth and sun are directly lined up. And that is when the lunar eclipse occurs. So that means when speaking about a full moon, a 100% full moon, meaning a real full moon, you can't call something a full moon if it's really not. And a lot of times things with globe, earth, there's they love to use the word appear. We're going to stick with the definite. So when you're talking about a definite full moon, meaning a 100% full moon, that is what you will call a lunar eclipse. So your eyes can tell the difference between 100% illuminated and 99.5% illuminated. That's amazing. Pretty good trick that, the queens. Now, they say that a lunar eclipse occurs when the moon moves into the Earth's shadow. This can occur only when the sun, Earth, and moon are exactly or very closely aligned with Earth between the other two, which can happen only on the night of a full moon when the moon is near either lunar node. So now I'm going to show you all the position of the Earth, the moon, and the sun during a full moon. And this is the lineup of the bodies based on the globe Earth model. So now they're saying that it is the Earth's shadow now that's causing the full moon and the lunar eclipse. They've moved on from illumination to Earth shine to shadow. Someone please tell me when have you ever seen a light shadow? You haven't. So how is the moon reflecting the Earth's shadow. Oh wow, she really doesn't understand it, does she? Okay, one last time. When the moon is illuminated and it looks bright, then that is the sunlight reflecting off it. When you can sort of see the moon, but it's really dim, then that is Earth shine. When the moon is being blocked by the Earth during a lunar eclipse, then that is the Earth's shadow. During a new moon, when you can't see the moon at all, that is because it is the side not illuminated by the sun because it's in between us and the sun. I hope that makes sense for her. Right, I think that just about does it for today. Another Flat Earth Friday, all done and dusted. Thank you so much for watching everyone. It truly is appreciated. If you enjoyed it today, hit that subscribe button. We really are on the march to uh, half a million now. Only about 38,000 to go. Uh, and of course, if you really, really, really enjoyed it, hit that like button too. Just enough time to once again thank Star Trek Fleet Command for sponsoring today. Remember, it's free on iOS, Android, and Windows. Download now using my link in the description or scan my QR code right there to join the fight. I've been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great weekend. And I'll see you briefly at the beginning of Tuesday's video for the first of the guest creators, Emma Thorne. See you then. <laughs>